All right. Year 10. Time for a right-angled trigonometry recap. I hope you remember this from term one. Uh, this is going to be our uh, beginning into the non-right-angled trigonometry topic, which we're going to be doing. But we first need to understand the fundamentals uh, that we already know. Uh, so firstly, we've got to remember SOCARTOA, okay? That's sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine or cos, um, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan of an angle, uh, or the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent, okay? Uh, so the steps that we need to do is we first need to think, okay, what is the relative position of the sides and the angles of concern in this question? And then choose from that the correct trig ratio using SOCARTOA, okay? So if you have the opposite and the hypotenuse uh, in relation to the angle, then you're going to use the sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse, okay? If you have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, you choose cos. If you have the uh, opposite and the adjacent, you choose tan, okay? Once you've chosen the correct one, you've got to set up the equation and you're going to make sure you substitute the values in the right spot. So Whatever the angle is, uh, whether you know the angle or not, goes in the angle spot uh, with the trig ratio. And then you've got the equal sign. And then you have whatever side goes on top of the fraction and whatever side goes on bottom, depending on what ratio you choose. So you put the right sides and the angles in the right spot. And then you think and you stop and you go, where is the unknown? Is the unknown on the top of the fraction? Is it on the bottom of the fraction? Is it in the angle? And then what you do next will depend on where that unknown is, okay, in when, when you go about rearranging and solving to find that value of that unknown. Okay, so let's do a few examples to uh, tweak your memory a little bit. So here uh, we have an angle here and we have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, okay? The adjacent is the one next to the angle, okay? The hypotenuse is the one, the biggest side that's always opposite the right angle. Uh, the opposite side is over here, but we don't care about the opposite side in this one, okay? There's no information given, and we don't need to know what that side is. So because we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we're going to choose cos. So it's going to be cos, bracket, and then we put the angle that we have here inside the bracket, okay? And then the adjacent side is x, the hypotenuse is 23, and then we've set up our equation. Okay, cos of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we stop and think, where is my unknown? I have my unknown at the top of this fraction here. So how can I get the unknown on its own? I've got to multiply by 23. So it's just like solving any other equation. I can multiply cos just like I can any other number. Okay, cos of an angle is just a number. And then I can put that in my calculator. So 23 times cos, and then 32, and I press my degrees, minutes, second button, and then 19 degrees, minutes, seconds, close brackets, equals, uh, and then I'm going to do it to one decimal place. So I get x equals 19.43 dot, 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 which is approximately equal to 19.4 meters. Okay. Uh, so that is the process of going through um, a trick question. Let's do another one here. Okay, we've got the angle here, we've got the adjacent, and we've got the hypotenuse. So this is also cos, okay? Uh, it's an upside down or sort of different to how you'd usually see a right angle triangle, but it's still a right angle triangle, and the hypotenuse is always opposite that uh, right angle. So it's got to be cos, let's make sure we can see that, cos. 51 degrees and 38 minutes equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, we set up our equations, making sure the right side goes in the right spot. So adjacent on top, hypotenuse on the bottom. So when you remember car, okay, it's cos of the angle equals and then adjacent on top, hypotenuse on the bottom. It's not CHA, it's CAH. Okay, and now we stop and think, where is my unknown? And I see X is on the bottom of the fraction. And I don't want x on the bottom of the fraction. I can't just divide by 52, okay? What I need to do is I need a times by x to both sides. Okay, let me just show that. Uh, be really clear what I'm doing. I'm timesing both sides by x. And I get x times cos of the angle. 
And I realize I'm still don't have the unknown on its own, but at least it's not on the bottom of a fraction. So what I can do is cos 51 degrees 38 uh, minutes is going to be some number. So I can still divide by that value. Okay, I can still divide both sides of the equation. It's just, we're just obeying all the normal equation rules. There's nothing different about this. We're just multiplying by a value. We're dividing by another value in the second step. And we get uh, x, okay, those two cancel out, equals 52 over cos 51 degrees 38 minutes. Okay, so now we have something, we've got x on its own, we can put the rest in the calculator. Oops. Uh, so I go 52 over cos 51 degrees and 38 minutes. Make sure you close your brackets and then you press equals and we get x equals 83.77 dot dot dot, which is approximately equal to 83.8 centimeters this time. Okay, so that one's a little trickier because the unknown was on the bottom. That's why we've got to stop and think, what do I need to do? Where's the unknown? And then do it. Now, if, you, if you're comfortable, you can do your cross multiplying method. That's the sort of short way, but you're still doing the same thing. You've got to understand what you're doing uh, when you cross multiply so that you know when you can use it and when you can't use it. So sometimes you can't do it. Uh, if you don't know why you're doing it or how it works, then you're more likely to make a mistake there. So if in doubt, just do it step by step, times both sides by x, divide both sides by whatever you're multiplying x by, and then you get x on its own. Okay, last thing is, uh, we've got a different question here. So I've got my angle that I'm looking at here. I've got the opposite side and I've got the adjacent side. So it's going to be tan. So tan, in this case, the angle is just theta and then opposite over adjacent. It's important you get that the right way around. It's not seven over five, it's five over seven in this instance. Okay, uh, and then I realize I stop and think, where is my unknown? The unknown is the angle, theta. So I've got to think, what do I do to get theta on its own? I need to use inverse tan. So theta equals inverse tan. The opposite of tan is inverse tan. Uh, so we just inverse tan both sides and we get theta equals inverse tan of five over seven. Okay, and then we get our calculator out and we go shift tan and that gives us inverse tan. And we go brackets five over seven, close those brackets and press equals. And we've got our uh, angle. Okay, so it's uh says to the nearest minute so i'm going to convert it to degrees minutes seconds i'm going to say 35 degrees 32 minutes and what was the seconds 15.64 seconds uh which becomes approximately 35 degrees and 32 minutes we round down because the seconds are less than 30 remember with degrees minutes and seconds uh you look at to whether it's 30 or above or less than 30 as to whether you round because there's only 60 degrees and 60 minutes. Uh, sorry, 60 minutes in a degree and 60 seconds in a minute. Okay, so a lot uh, uh, should be coming back to you about when you're finding sides and rearranging, uh, when you're trying to find an angle and you use inverse trig uh, to get the angle on its own. Um, good luck with the work today. I'll catch you later.